I'm Heather at Uminami Farm. It's September 21st. Um, happy fall, everybody. It's hard to believe that the autumn equinox is already here. Um, but yeah, it's fall. We are finished all of our outdoor planting for the year. Um, we are now moving indoors. And at the same time that we're needing to move indoors and get the greenhouses ready for the next round of planting, it's also fall fruiting season. Um, I'm here in the kabocha field right now, and the kabocha are just about ready to harvest. We've got some nice ones here. Um, we kind of wait for the, when the vines start to die down and this stem here turns corky, that's when you know they're ready to go. So this will be, you know, we'll probably be harvesting in the next week or two kind of a thing. Um, I really regret that, um, I know, I know a number of you have been asking about kabocha squash. Unfortunately, we don't have very much this year. Back in the spring when we were planting them, for some reason, twice in a row, we had really uh, bad germination problems. And so we just didn't have the same number of seedlings. And then with the spring weather being cool, they also didn't grow as vigorously as they normally might. And we were a little bit late in our planting because of the germination problems in the springtime. So we're not gonna have as much squash. We probably won't be selling our kabocha until the winter. It actually tastes better if you leave it to store for a little while first. So when that season comes, we look forward to sharing it with you. In the meantime, we just ask your patience. We're really sorry that we don't have as much this year. But there are a lot of other beautiful fruits and vegetables coming on at this time. Let's take a walk over and take a look at the apples. We just finished harvesting um, the Graventine apples and we're going to start Spartan next. Um, Spartan is these little red ones, kind of like Macintosh but not quite. Right here, I'll just show you these ones because they're nearby. These are our Fuji apples. They are so nice and beautiful this year. We had some friends who helped us with thinning the fruit because there was actually like two or three times as much fruit on the tree in the beginning and it just couldn't all be supported by the tree. And so beautiful year for, for tree fruit. Um, we actually had one fruit tree this year that um, produced, you know, a few boxes of apples. It just came up in the field over there all by itself. I don't know if a bird dropped the seed or something like this, but we thought there's no way that this little wild apple tree can have nice fruit on it, but every one was really delicious. We wonder if it might be a seed off of our neighbor's lemon pippin tree because it had that yellow color and kind of sweet but sour um, flavor to it. And so we're really, we're really blessed to enjoy this beautiful season of fruit right now. All right, here is um, Haksai. This is Napa cabbage. And um, yeah, we are really happy with how they're doing. These ones were transplanted just a couple of weeks ago and they're looking beautiful. We, um, these are actually our later types. We separated out our planting into two or three stages this year. Instead of planting everything at once, we decided to direct sow the earlier types in another greenhouse. And then the, um, the medium term types and the long term types we transplanted here and then one other greenhouse. So hopefully that's going to help us to um, make the most of a few different places of growing conditions kind of a thing. Sometimes one house does better, sometimes another does better. Hopefully by having multiple locations we'll kind of get some of the best of each, I hope. So it's hard to say exactly when these will, these will be ready. I'm going to say later in the fall sometime. So it's going to be like at least another month or two kind of a deal, but they are on their way. And um, these ones, like I said, are not the earliest type. The earlier ones are already maybe more like about that big, but not, not quite headed up yet. So those early types might actually be ready within another month. We look forward to having them for you. So late summer is the time when if we want to have crops in the winter, that's when we have to act on it. One of the crops um, you've probably seen if you're in our box program or if you shop at Fujia is kakina, which is kind of like, a, it's like a kale relative with a little bro um, broccolette type um, floret on top with the leaves and the, the stem. And um, yeah, we would normally transplant those. This year what we decided to do is we actually tried sowing them with a seeding machine that was set up to kind of drop like little drop little groups of seeds and then we're planning to go through and thin them out afterwards. These guys are looking a little bit smaller than I'd like for this time of year so I'm really hopeful that they'll still do okay. As I came here to 
show you the crop though, what I realized is a little bit more challenging. Actually, some creature has been eating them. Like we planted the similar type of crop here. This is the Bansei Kukitachi, which is a kind of um, those um, broccolette type crops that um, is similar to Kakina. And um, look, the leaves have been, the, the little seedling had leaves on it before, but they've all been eaten off. I don't know what creature did this. I don't see any slug trails. I wonder if it could be a bird. I mean, there are rabbits in the area. It's really hard to say. It's really hard to say what sort of creature has been doing this. But this is really challenging because at this point, if we try to replant now, there's not that much time for them to grow. It's already late September. And um, if there's no crop there, then I don't know, maybe we can just plant green manure, but it's, we had hoped to have a much bigger amount of those things going into the winter. So we'll see how it goes. This is not the only field where, where we planted these things. We have another field down there as well. But um, I wonder if one of the challenges is just that being busy, we decided not to bother putting the white floating row cover on top of these guys. And if we had put it on, that would have protected them from birds or from rabbits or from whatever other, other sort of creatures might want to come here. But not having done it, they were open to predation. So that might just mean that next year we need to be more diligent about putting that on on time. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on it. Maybe we, I, I, I don't know, would we still put it on now? I don't know. That's something we would have to consider. But We'll see how it goes. Thankfully, there are still, if you look up and down the road, there's still lots of nice green seedlings here. So hopefully, hopefully we're going to have a good crop. The next step for the ones that are still alive will be just to go through and thin out these groups to just one strong seedling. And, um, oh, look here, more of them have been eating these back here too. Anyways, of the ones that are left, thin them out to one strong seedling and um, help the remaining plants to be as strong as they can. So. There's always things we don't expect, but nonetheless, lots of things are growing well. It's daikon time now. It's apple time now, like I said. And um, yeah, we'll keep you posted. In the meantime, thanks for joining us today. Um, um, yeah, we look forward to doing it next time. Bye for now.